My name's Catherine Sutton. Welcome to today's Ask About Asthma video. I'm a parent of a child with asthma and severe allergies. Following the experiences I had, I set up Airborne Allergy Action, a non-profit to give personalised advice on how to effectively reduce exposure to allergenic and non-allergenic particles in the air that along with viruses can trigger asthma. I was on the advisory panel for the Royal Report on the Health Effects of Indoor Air Quality on Children and Young People. This looked at the most up-to-date research and evidence on the subject. It was found that poor indoor air quality at home and in schools is linked to health effects in people of all ages, including breathing problems, allergies and asthma. Today, I'd like to give you five top tips to reduce exposure to allergens in the air, such as dust mites, mold, specific types of pollen and animal dander to use alongside any medication. My first top tip would be for you to start asking why is your child coughing or wheezing? There will be a reason, and it's often related to the particles in the air that they're breathing during their day at home or in school. Sometimes a doctor might say that your child has a virus. However, research has shown that the presence of an allergen to which a child's allergic, together with a cold virus, makes hospitalizations much more likely. It's therefore important at the time when viral asthma is at a peak, for example, in September every year, to also reduce exposure to potential inhaled allergens. My second top tip is to ventilate your house to keep your humidity around 40 to 60 degrees. Open the windows a bit, open any trickle vents, use the extractor hat, hood or fan when cooking or in the bathroom. Thirdly, if your child wakes up coughing or sneezing, they may be allergic to house dust mite allergen. This is a tiny creature which is invisible to the eye, but produces a very significant trigger for childhood asthma in its poo. It's a particular problem in the UK all year round. The level of allergen can, however, be reduced effectively if avoided. One solution can be to use anti-dust mite bedding. This can provide a barrier against the allergen. It's made of very thick material and put around the mattress, duvet and pillow, so the allergen is no longer breathed in as you sleep and it's available in the shops at a range of prices. Research has shown that anti-dust mite bedding can reduce hospitalizations in dust mite allergic children. However, it's also important to address other relevant exposures a child might have during their day. Another alternative could be to wash your bedding at 60 degrees every two weeks, which can also work very well. Fourthly, clean and vacuum regularly. A damp cloth to remove the dust from surfaces will reduce the dust that gets into the air. Don't use sprays if you can help it. Also, consider the vacuum cleaner in your home or at your child's school. Can you smell dust? Some vacuum cleaners release and suspend particles in the air. A vacuum cleaner with a HEPA filter and a sealed bag can contain the dust and keep it away from your child's nose. If you have a vacuum cleaner with a chamber, make sure it's keeping the dust in and don't leave the dust inside where the bacteria can grow. Dust can contain all sorts of nasty particles that trigger asthma as it rises in the air. My final top tip is to look around the house for mould, also a year round allergen. This can be present on walls from leaky gutters or even behind the wallpaper. Carefully clean small areas of the mould and maybe use a mask. If you have a significant mould problem, contact your landlord or environmental health department. Get any leaks repaired that might be causing the mould or get some expert advice.